to Gascopy TV studio in Geneva. We're talking about perspectives for the fixed income market with Annie Balman Raka. She is from KBR Advisors in Geneva. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Daniel, for inviting me. So there is a lot of liquidity in the markets due to the quantitative easing and a lot of high yield companies were able to finance with very low spreads, also very loose credit conditions. What risks do you see in the fixed income market? The Federal Reserve uh, in the US is the biggest market maker in terms of uh, government bond uh, and it will have uh, from this year till 2022. Today, uh, although we are not at the, the tightest level in terms of spread, uh, investment grade bonds and high yield spread, th their excess spread over government is uh, respectively 136 basis points and 482 basis points. Uh, and that, although it's not, as, uh, as I said before, not the tightest level or at the level of uh, 2007, the pre-financial crisis, the risk is that with the Fed normalizing, the spreads will widen and that will imply price losses. In terms of the high yield companies, you were mentioning that they were able to refinance uh, their debt at very low cost uh, level. It's also a question of liquidity. The Fed is very scared to create a systemic risk by raising its interest rates. Uh, if we think about this, uh, the level or the inventory of bonds held at dealers is 20% of what it used to be in 2007. And at the same time, the, the outstanding uh, corporate debt has been increasing 2.5 times. Uh, so that when the Fed again will start raising uh, rising its interest rates, that will probably affect uh, the spread level. Those high yield companies uh, have been able, as you said, to refinance at very low cost. At the same time, they've also been able to uh, issue bonds with covenant lines. 60% of the universe of new issue debt among high yield are covenant light. It means that they have less protection, they offer less protection for bondholders. That also is a, is a worry, is that when the Fed will start rising rates, spreads will widen. And also in the EM world, uh, the debt has increased and we are in a, especially in the US for instance, we are in the cycle of releveraging. So companies are having more debt on their balance sheet and it's the same pattern for emerging uh, corporate debt where they've been increasing uh, their debt at a record level of 83% of GDP while their respective government have remained uh, stable in terms of uh, increasing their debt. So the prospects of higher short-term rates in the US should lead to a higher default rate for the US specul speculative credits. What would this mean to the credit market? Uh, if we have to put into perspective that uh, one third of the high yield universe uh, in the US is made up of energy companies and with the price uh, of oil collapsing uh, since the last quarter of 2014 that has put a lot of pressure on those companies and made them very vulnerable. They have a lot of debt on their balance sheet and it's uh, reflected in their, their spread level. They are trading or they are offering an excess uh, spread of 200 basis points above other high yield uh, companies. And uh, for instance, UBS expect uh, the default rate to increase to reach 10 to 15 percent at, uh, at in next year, in the next 12 months. So that's also very worrying. At a broader level, if we again talk about emerging market uh, companies and if I, I take out the non-financial sector, they have been increasing their debt at very worrying level. Uh, the amount of uh, debt issued by emerging market companies uh, has surpassed uh, those of uh, of the high yield universe in the US. Since 2009, it has doubled its size. It's now at 1.5 trillion uh, US dollar. And that's worrying because most of those companies, a lot of companies have been issuing dollar denominated bonds and other hard currency bonds. And when the Fed will start again normalizing its interest rate, it will have an impact on refinanci refinancing cost of those companies. And JP Morgan expect uh, the default rate of uh, emerging companies uh, to reach 5.4% uh, of default rate this year. 
So if we switch to Europe now, the risks for deflation are lower because of the quantitative easing of the European Central Bank. So how positive are you that the, Euro the European economy can recover without any economic shake-up? We are very confident that uh, Euro European economy can, uh, the recovery can be sustainable thanks to the combination of uh, low oil prices and very weak uh, uh, European currency over the last uh, six months. That has really helped uh, uh, the uh, European uh, countries' economies to uh, recover and uh, not only those uh, export-led companies such as uh, Germany but also other countries with uh, their internal consumption picking up. In terms of uh, uh, indicators, European indicators, we've seen very positive signs. For instance, consumer confidence index are almost trading at uh, the highest level. We've seen industrial production picking up. Uh, so we're very confident that the uh, European economy can uh, can be uh, the, the recovery can be sustainable apart from uh, an accident uh, in terms of Greece being kicked out of the euro or by a referendum getting out of the euro. Uh, we've also see uh, the ECB that has put such a, uh, a safeguards in terms of uh, its, uh, as you said, you mentioned before, with its uh, the launch of its uh, quantitative easing program. The ECB is buying 60 billion of uh, government bonds and cover bonds every month uh, from March this year till uh, September 2016. That is putting also a cap on yield and that is very positive for uh, companies that want to refinance, not only government, but also uh, companies. We've seen the countries like uh, Spain and uh, Ireland that are not booming, but are doing quite well. Uh, with uh, There have been very successful in implementing structural reform in their labor market, for instance, or for their companies. And to such an extent, I would say Italy and France. Uh, however, uh, the uh, uh, the, the problem remains that unemployment uh, rate is very high in Europe. That is uh, preventing the uh, Euro, Eurozone economy to, uh, to be really boosting. Where do you see the markets in six months and what are your strategic proposals? Correct. Uh, we see that uh, there will be a repricing in terms of corporate spreads because we will see the Fed, we expect the Fed to start normalizing its interest uh, rate sometime this fall and spreads of corporate bonds will start widening. Uh, that is why we recommend our clients and investors to improve the credit quality of their bond portfolios, i.e. getting rid of their lowest credit uh, that has have really performed well uh, by the past. And also, why not buying some protection against inflation? And that maybe sounds a little bit uh, Weird, but we've seen, uh, thanks to a stabiliz stabilization of oil prices and the economy improving uh, in, in Europe and doing quite well in the US, we've seen inflation expectation growing uh, a little bit. And that would be a good idea to buy some inflation-linked bonds, uh, either from the US, but also uh, from Europe. Annie balman raka from KBR Advisors in Geneva, thank you very much for being here and sharing this information with us. Thank you, Daniel. And thanks for watching. Do make sure to keep clicking back on the Dukas Copy TV website for latest updates and exclusive interviews. Have a great day and see you next time.